morning children sai ram welcome to this session today let us start with a new lesson which is animal classification we have come to the sixth lesson of our syllabus now what is meant by animal class in standard 9 we have learnt about classification of plants which came under the um, plants come under the kingdom plantae we have learnt about this same way um, under in the five kingdom classification the animals come under the kingdom animalia we are going to learn animal classification what is meant by class why we should classify animals see there are about 7 million animal species in our earth and some are you know about the variety of there is a huge diversity of animals there are some are tiny some are very huge some are terrestrial some are aquatic some have fins some have uh, scales some crawl on the land some sway so there are variety of plants it is difficult for us to learn each and every plant animal separately so when we classify them according to the differences and similarities it becomes easy to learn the full uh, group of animals so that's why classification of animals is very important okay so we learn what is meant by classification the formation of groups and subgroups of animals depending upon similarities and differences among animals is called as animal classification see when we classify even in in uh, for uh, students also suppose we don't classify children in different standards suppose all are mixed together it becomes difficult for teachers to teach isn't it so when we um, group them when we group students also since ninth standard 10th standard so all are of same uh, category or same age same so it becomes easy for us to teach also because all of our same same way animals when we group them among with the help of the similarities similarities and differences it becomes easier for us to understand okay now what are the why should we classify there are seven points which helps uh, which shows that why we should classify what are the benefits of animal classification what is the first one a study of animals become convenient it is convenient for us to study study of few animals from a group helps to understand about the entire animal group so it is not necessary we have to learn each and every animal when we learn about now we are learning today we are in this lesson we are going to learn about the groups okay if we learn one all they are group they are made into groups so when we learn a few animals of the group it uh, it is similar to the full animal groups in, in that classification suppose we are learning about uh, porifera or anilida or uh, uh, reptilia we are learning about one group so all the animals belonging to that characters will all have the same type of Uh, features or uh, or characteristics okay so it becomes convenient for us to learn we need not learn the entire uh, animal group only one type of example if we learn it is similar for the entire group it gives idea about animal evolution when it evolved how many years back all that it gives idea animals can be easily identified with great accuracy when we classify them and it becomes helps to understand the relationship of animals with other living organisms it helps to understand the habitat of each animal and its exact role in the nature where it lives suppose we take the um, uh, uh, one classification of animal which aquatic so we know they are all living in water or in a sea or like this we can classify this animals based on one particular character one particular uh, role okay habitat where they live terrestrial means you come to know they live on the land aquatic means we come to know they live in the water so based on this we can we can classify the animals it helps to understand various adaptations shown by animals so this also helps uh, that is the feature some crawl some have wings this is adaptation so according to the region according to their uh, body characters we can divide classify animals it becomes easier easier for us to learn about them okay now what was the traditional method okay this part is omitted but only the what is notochord you should know so that's why the traditional method of animal classification 
was based on two groups that is only two, there are two types one is non chordates and another one is chordates so the traditional method was only de depending upon the presence or absence of notochord what is a notochord so when we learn about the other characteristics in the in the later part of the lesson the word notochord comes then you will not understand so that's why i have just introduced this what is this traditional method of animal for the examination this year this what is the traditional method of animal classification will not come because this small part is omitted okay but still we should know what is a notochord so that's why i have explained this what is a notochord is a <clears throat> is a long cord like supporting structure present on the dorsal side of animal body it is like <clears throat> a, a rod okay it is a long rod which is present on the top part, upper part of the animal it it keeps the nerve tissue isolated from the remaining body it is like a above above it is like a cord which divides the nerve tissue from the remaining part of the body that is called a notochord so depending upon the notochord whether they have the notochord or no if they have the notochord they are called as chordates if they don't have notochord they are called as non chordates this was the traditional method of animal classification now later this is now conventional system of animal classification this is the recent one <clears throat> in this non chordate are classified into 10 phyla okay phylum we have learnt about kingdom phylum kingdom sub kingdom phylum sub phylum we have learnt on these in the lower classes so under this non chordates are divided into 10 phyla what are they protozoa porifera nidaria platyhelminthes ashelminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and hermicordata so this names you should learn it by heart okay what are the 10 phyla you can repeat protozoa porifera nidaria platyhelminthes ashelminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and hemichordata these are the 10 phyla which belongs to the non chordates okay under <coughs> uh, chordates animals are grouped together in a single phylum and the name of the phylum is also chordata only okay phylum phylum is chordate chordata and the phylum is chordate and this phylum is divided into three sub phylum okay there are three sub phyla what are they eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata what are the three sub phyla eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata and this vertebrata is further divided into six classes what are they cyclostomata amphibia apes fishes reptiles and mammals so when we learn the table you will understand here <coughs> see here in kingdom animalia you can see here kingdom animalia it is divided into two sub kingdom chordata and non chordate under chordate there are the 10 phylums you learn porifera porifera nidaria platyhelminthes ashelminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and hemichordata there are the 10 types of uh, non chordates okay now protozoa first one is porifera then we learn we are learning only from porifera this year okay already we have learnt about protozoa last year so all these are 10 types of Uh, non chordates under uh, chordata there are uh, the phylum is also chordate there are three types what are they eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata what are the three uh, under uh, chordates there are three the phylum is also chordata under phylum chordata there are three sub phyla what are they eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata under vertebrata there are six what are they you can see here there are, there are six types you can see there are cyclostomata fishes amphibia reptilia apes and mammals what are they cyclostomata these are the classes so cyclostomata fishes amphibia reptilia apes and mammals these are the six uh, classes of uh, phylum sub phylum vertebrata this table 
you should know by heart you should know how the uh, um, chordates are divided into 10 phyla what you should know protozoa porifera nidaria platy elminthes ash elminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and hermicordata these are the 10 phyla under chordates there are only the phylum is also chordata and only one phylum that is divided into three sub phyla what are they urochordata cephalochordata and vertebrate this vertebrata is divided into six classes what are the class cyclostomata pieces amphibia reptilia aves and mammals so this table you should know by heart okay See so how they are classified, there are some uh, features, there are some characteristics, some why they are classified in this manner, we are going to see in this, there are some uh, qualities of these animals, that's why they are grouped under this uh, or particular uh, type, okay. So first one is body organ, in this field, this uh, body organization, germ layer, symmetry all this detail will not come for your exam what is meant by cellular grade organization all this will not come because those two pages are deleted but still when we learn about the characters you will come you will come to the word like cellular grade organization or organ system grade organization so you should know what it is so i'm just giving in brief short what it is organization so based on body organization the animals are classified that means some are cellular grade that means only cells are there in that it does not form any tissue so cell cellular grade organization so all the uh, the phylum porifera the animals coming under the phylum porifera comes under this uh, cellular grade organization okay the animals coming under nidaria will have cell tissue grade organization that means cells all will join to form tissue only tissue there is no any organ formed only tissue will form the function of all the uh, uh, all the functions so it is called as uh, cell tissue grade organization in the phylum nidaria so when we learn about nidaria so all the animals coming under nidaria will have cell tissue grade organization only tissue will be there there will not be any organ form so under the uh, platforms that is uh, will have that is uh, animals coming under platyhelminthes will have organ tissue organ grade organization that means there will not be complete system formed only organs will be there they will perform all the functions examples is all the animals belonging to the phylum platyhelminthes okay now all other higher organisms like man crab etc we have systems we have different systems where organs join together to form systems we have systems they all come under organ system grade organization so when we learn all these uh, uh, characters so we all are grouped together under because all of us have got system all the higher organisms have got system cellular organ system grade organization so when we learn about organization when we learn about learn about characteristics in other when you porifera Anilida, Arthropoda. So when we, we this words will come, so you will understand better. So I have explained what is cellular grade, tissue grade, organ grade, and system grade organization. Next come under body symmetry. So you will come across the word they are bilateral symmetry or asymmetrical or radial symmetry. So you should know what is meant by that when we learn about the characteristics. So so what is meant by symmetry if body of any animal is cut through imaginary axis of body it may or may not produce two equal halves so sometimes so suppose you are dividing your body drawing a line across your body through your face okay so when we divide we can divide our body into two equal halves and we both will have the similar parts one eye is this side one eye is one nose so you can see one part of the nose this side and that side so all the body parts it can be divided into two parts. They are called as binary, binary bilateral symmetry. So if the imagine no, it's not actually cutting, just an imaginary axis. If we draw across a body, if it divides into two equal halves, they are called as what body symmetry. They are called as bilateral symmetry. If you cannot draw uh, imaginary line making into two equal uh, equal halves, it is called as asymmetrical. When you take amoeba. 
it is shape is also different so we can we cannot make into two equal halves in any angle so all and they all come under asymmetrical they are asymmetrical they cannot draw they don't have equal parts both the sides what is radial symmetry that means starfish that is any angle you can divide them into two halves so when we learn the characteristics of starfish so that comes under a uh, phylum so that time you will learn they are they all belong to radial symmetry so i will not explain that time what is radial symmetry that means that can be imaginary line can be drawn in any axis that are that is called as radial symmetry <coughs> now what are the three type of symmetry one is asymmetrical that means it cannot be divided into two halves any angle radial symmetry means it can be Uh, divided into two halves in any angle wherever you make into two parts it will be equal and bilateral in only one direction you can draw imaginary axis and you will get two equal halves so that is man insects birds and all are bilateral symmetry now next part is germ layer see there are germ layers that means they are they uh, in the term in the characteristic you will come to know they are either diploplastic or triplo what is meant by that that is what is this germ layer this germ layers are formed during initial period of embryonic development and from those germ layers only different tissues are formed so in the early embryonic stage there are some layers formed inside the <clears throat> embryo they can be either diploplastic and triplo there are two types of germ layers some are diploplastic that is uh, yeah. that means they have only two uh, germ layers they are called as diploplastic all the examples only the animals belonging to nidaria okay they all have diploplastic all other remaining animals have got three germ layers they are called as triploplastic in the characters we learn diploplastic triploplastic so you will have to understand what is meant by uh, diploplastic and triplo to a diploplastic means they have two germ layers and triploplastic means they have three germ layers what are the two germ layers in diploplastic endoderm and ectoderm in triploplastic there are three layers they are endoderm middle one is the mesoderm and the last one is ecto ectoderm so endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm they are called as triploplastic animals okay then last one <coughs> body cavity see the that is what is body cavity cavity between the body and internal organs is also called as body cavity or coelom okay what is coelom that is the body cavity <coughs> then eucelomate that means uh, there are three types of body you will come across the word eucelomate acelomate and pseudocelomate what is eucelomate animals with true body cavity they called as eucelomate and acelomate means that is all the animals coming to that is annelida have got eucelomate that is they have true body cavity and acelomate the cavity is absent animals coming to the phylum porifera nidaria as well as platyhelminthes are acelomate <coughs> and pseudocelomate only animals from phylum ashelminthes are pseudocelomate they don't have any serum they have false serum they don't they're called as pseudo means false so there are three types eucelomate that means animals having true body cavity they are coming under all the earthworm that is all the anim animal coming under the kingdom and the uh, phylum annelida they all have eucelomate that means they have true body cavity acelomate that means body cavity is absent that is animals belonging to the phylum porifera nidaria and platyhelminth and pseudocelomate means false coelom animals from the phylum ashelminth and so you can see here this is the table you can see here how they are classified body organization is also there you can see here cellular grade see when i when you see this table you will not understand if i have not explained that see cellular cellular grade only for the first, first one protozoa porifera see this tissue grade is there then under body uh, symmetry you can see asymmetrical bilateral as well as um, uh, radial as well as bilateral so which all comes under which are all acelomate which is pseudocelomate which is eucelomate all the animals are belonging see eucelomate acelomate you can see nidaria you can see the example of all this this is there for the exam 
though the explanation of germ layers by that the symmetry and all those is not there this table is there for the exams and that's why i have explained that go through this table and this whatever i explained which all animals are which all phylums are belonging to the particular this is given in this table just go through this you will understand much better you can see here so body under body organization there are cellular grade and um, tissue organ grade and body symmetry either they are bilateral which are all bilateral you come to know you will which all uh, phylum are bilateral which are all um, uh, radial and which are asymmetrical you will know in this table and body cavity some are acylomate one is pseudo cylomate and some is u cylomate which is also given here which are of which all phylum belongs to all these and this is a phylum so this table is important go through the table it may not may not come for the exam but you have to know which all are uh, which all about the body cavity body organization body symmetry which all so when we learn this table when we learn, write about the characters one point you can write about the body cavity you can write about the symmetry as well as organization hope you all understood till here children so we have learnt about only the basic how animals are classified and we will learn in the next uh, like uh, video we will learn about the uh, different different characters of or uh, animal kingdom animal phylums okay we will learn about all these protozoa already we have learned porifera all these we will learn Pro porifera nidaria so we will learn all these in this next uh, video okay so we will start with porifera then comes under uh, nidaria platyhelminthes ashelminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hermicordata and chordata first i'll finish then i will go with the chordates hope you all understood children okay now we will continue in the next uh, video thank you children